Alrighty, welcome back. If you've been here before, if you haven't, welcome. Uh, Heather and I did some more work on that truck today. We didn't do anything yesterday because it was pretty bad weather here. Uh, it's actually, it is melting today, it's above freezing. You wouldn't know it though, other than the puddles are thawed out, but it's uh, fairly cool. Let's check this out here. So. We can actually get back at working at this soon here, but uh, we're taking a little break from the building, like I said before. Let that firm up a little bit in there too. The water's starting to get away. If we keep working around in there, it'll be just one big mud pit. We've got the generator running today. Didn't use it all day yesterday, you didn't have to. <coughs> uh, see, so I got a flat tire on this. It goes flat every once in a while. Anyway, let's see what we did here. I'll show you what we did on this. You folks seen this, I didn't do anything more on the cab other than what's there that I welded up. We did this fender the other day, we got this off. And then we went at it. We pulled this fender off today and we took out the rad front rad support. Now we're gonna pull the rad out. Next step is remove the bumper. So the bumper, the rad, the two inner fenders, undo the heater, take the heater box out, uh, undo the brake booster, and we're gonna strip the cab so we can lift that off. There's four bolts to remove the cab. Of course, the linkage and whatnot, like I mentioned before. But I turned the fenders upside down, so this is what the fenders look like. So that lip is not too bad. It needs a good sandblasting cleaned up. Weld the lip back into this section here, which isn't really that bad. Sandblast that, clean it up, weld a spot there. Sandblast it all and clean it up, like I say, and weld it here as well. You know, fix this lip up. The other one's about the same, it's not that bad. I have to replace this bracket here. That's what holds the battery box on. It ends up holding this inner fender up. As you can see, this here has been sagging for a while. So that has to get repaired, which is no big deal. And this is the rad cradle. So this side here, pretty solid there. Again, I'll sandblast that. I'll fix some of these spots here where the, where the bolts went through that's, that's rusty. Sandblast this and I'll weld this up to make it the same. Not too bad, that metal's fairly thick. So once I sandblast it, that'll be good. So the fenders need a little attention, not too bad. They're easy to work like that. I can work on them, you know, right on a, on a table. I can weld them all up with my little MIG. I can weld that up. The hood's in good condition. It just needs to be cleaned up. The doors are, are both really good. So I have the doors good, the hood's good. Needs the fenders worked a little bit, not too bad. The rad crate a little bit of work, not too bad. The front bumper is good. There's a little couple of rust spots here that needs attention, not too bad. The rear bumper, we have a good rear bumper. The rad's really good in it, so it's good radiator. Good engine, good transmission. The brake lines all look good on it. The frame looks good on it. Have a really good spare bumper at the back for it. So it's just a matter of welding up the cab, fixing the box, the two fenders, the rad support, and clean up the frame and paint it, put it back together. Pressure wash this engine. I'll clean all that. I'll, I'll repair the uh, valve cover gasket before I put it back together. It's probably an old cork one in there but I'll check. If it's not, I will, uh, if it's a cork one, I'll replace it with a rubber one. I'll, I'll update it a little bit. The windshield has one stone chip on the left. It's in the path of the passenger side wiper blade. I'm gonna check, see what, see what, see if I need another one. Still, it's just our time. We haven't spent anything into it other than the little bit of Argo shield we had there, auto weld, whatever you wanna call it, and some wire for that. Today we're running the generator, but we really didn't need the generator running to work on the truck. The grill could use a little bit of attention. I know you can buy all these new. We don't want to buy new. That's the thing we don't want to. I want to fix those fenders. I want to save us some money, fix those fenders, like I said. And uh, so Heather at first wanted to go midnight purple on it, but midnight purple, we would have to buy some kind of paint and mix it ourselves to get that color because we're not going to spend hundreds of dollars buying the proper paint 
So we might go with a dark blue, I think. We've decided on that because it's too hard to mix. So if we got, say, some kind of blue and mix some red or whatever it is, uh, you know, to get our color purple, well, if we painted a couple fenders and then we didn't have enough mixed up, we had to mix more up for the truck box, good luck trying to get that exactly the same. So they'd be different colors. So that's why I want to stick with just a base color on it. Nothing, nothing weird, like say, uh, Go we'll pick up a blue or a red or something that we can uh, we can match later if we ever have to. That comes straight out of the can and there's no weird mixing. Yeah, unless we buy a couple gallons of it and mix it all together and then seal it back up. We could do that, I guess. You know, maybe that's what we'll do. I don't know. If she wants if she wants that color. Maybe we'll we'll order that, or we'll go down and I'll pick it up some some trim clad or rust oleum. I'm I'm not breaking the bank on the paint either. I'll tell you that right now. It's not going to be. It's not gonna be a really expensive paint. Although all paint's kind of expensive now, but it's not gonna be like, uh, you know, it's not gonna be like uh, uh, Nason or, you know, uh, Dulux DuPont. I don't even know if you can get all that. It's been so long since I worked in a body shop, I don't even know what's out there for paint anymore. That's where we're sitting right now. I wanted to give you an update on that. Next thing that, like I say, we're gonna do is I oiled the bolts for the bumper front bumper they're all oiled up the rear bolts are oiled I'm just gonna let them sit and when I'm ready to pop those off I'll unbolt them I'm hoping we can save those chrome carriage bolts in the bumper then we can pop that off and we'll do the same we'll pop the back bumper off because I'm going to replace the other bumper once the cabs off we're gonna clean the frame up give it a good spray job and then I may build a good trailer hitch for it later on and put on it yeah and then, you know, four new tires, probably four new shock absorbers. We're not going to have much money into the truck, as you folks know. It's going to be our time, which is not a big deal. Not a big deal. It's too, it's too, too damp and uh, kind of muddy out there right now anyways to be working on the building. So I would rather spend our time working on this, getting this truck going. You know, I mean, what did you do last year? I went at it. And I redid this mill, this homemade mill. I went at it and redid that last year. What did I do the year before? I went at that that uh, Yamaha 350 Big Bear. I cleaned that all up. I built one out of two or three and I painted it all up. So that was a good spring job. Before that, what did I do? Oh yeah, I worked on the Alpine in the basement one winter and I built myself an Alpine. And the Alpine's good. The, the uh, Yamaha Big Bear is still good. You know what I mean? So every spring, seems like I get doing something, I guess I get, <laughs> yeah, that's the way it goes, I guess. Yeah, anyway. And this side here is not as bad as the other side, but there's pieces underneath I have to weld and I don't want to weld it up from up top here. So this has to be all welded. And I'm cutting everything out that looks bad. I'm cutting it all out and I'm putting all new metal in there. I'm not messing around with old rusty stuff. I, I have some good metal around here and it's 16th of an inch. So, I mean, that's, you know, I mean, that'll last. Once I prime that, paint that, it'll last probably the rest of my life. I mean, the truck's 40 years old now. I'm sure I'll get another 20 or 30 out of it. So I'll be 56. So if I last 30 years, that's 86 years old. I don't see me lasting 30 years, but you never know. You never know. If I last till I'm 86, that just has to last 30 years. By then, uh, we probably won't be running a gasoline engine the way that things are going now. We probably won't be running a gasoline engine the next couple of years the way things are going. Which isn't going to be good for us out here because, anyway, you know how it goes, right? I mean, the infrastructure is not there yet, but... We're not going to get into that. That's a debate for somebody else, not for this guy. So, yeah, that's where we stand at this. I wanted to uh, give you folks a little update. We didn't turn on the camera. I had a fellow show up here. I had to do a little job on him for him. I had to remove the bearing on his uh, Yamaha, uh, sorry, on his uh, uh, 2013 Polaris 550 ATV. The rear bearing went on it and he couldn't get the bearing race out of the hub so i just fired up the little welder and i just welded a a ring around there 
So when you put steel on when you're welding, the steel goes on liquid form, so it's already expanded as much as it'll go, and then when it cools off, it contracts and it shrinks the, the bearing race, so it just slides right out. And then I had to take this off of his, the outer hub, and that just popped off like nothing. So I got out my bearing uh, uh, press, or whatever you want to call it, uh, Anyways, I put the new bearings all back in it, and that was a, that was done. So that's why those are there. That's there, and then I got these here plus this thing here. And die grinder, of course, when the bearing went, it rolled over some of the material on his uh, hub. So I had to take that out for him and switch it all over, and he was happy. I ordered the bearings three days ago for him and installed them today. But hope you folks aren't getting bored of this video. I mean, not this video, but this video series on the truck. We'll be a little while at it, probably a month. In a month there, it should be, should be dried up enough. We can get back at the building. So keep the, keep the videos, or keep the comments coming. We really appreciate the comments. We really appreciate the kind, encouraging comments about this vehicle. And uh, hopefully we're doing the vehicle justice. I hate seeing an older truck like this go to scrap, especially something this old that's lasted this long and that's this solid. Some of you folks are gonna look at it and say, well, it's not that solid, but really? For a 40 year old truck, I think it's pretty darn solid. Like there's not a whole lot of, I mean, for 40 years old, for up here in that salt, that's not a lot of rust for 40 years old up here. I've seen them worse than that that was a daily driver. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, tomorrow, like I say, front bumper, remove the rad, inner fenders, uh, start taking stuff off the cab, and hopefully by tomorrow evening we can have the, the cab lifted off this. So when we come out in the morning, we'll set the camera up, we'll get right to it, and you'll see how that goes. Anyway, you folks take care, and we'll try to talk to you another time. Bye-bye, all.